Hi, I'm here with uh, Tom Marlowe, the General Manager of Key West Boats, and we're going to do a little voiceover recording on an introduction of the Key West 203 Dual Console, which is a bow rider style of fishing boat and one of the later uh, additions to the Key West lineup. Over to you, Tom. Okay, thank you. Our, our goal with the, the 203 DFS was to build a very family friendly, low maintenance bow rider for the the man that's looking for something he can do some fishing out of, but he doesn't want to sacrifice the you know, the family comfort of the, the generous seating. Um, we have a, a lounge area that you can lay down. Um, we have uh, a lot of storage on the boat. Um, and because this is a saltwater designed boat, like all of Key West boats, we have the low maintenance, easy cleanup of the you know, no carpet on the floor, self bailing deck. Um, those items just keep the you know, the the fun at a maximum and the work at a minimum. And uh, if you'll notice, like over here where you are, Simon, if you'll raise it from the back side there, buddy, uh, open your, there you go. We have a ski locker here. That ski locker is six feet long, so you can hold the uh, you know, the long style skis. You can also put some wakeboards in there, what have you, and get them completely out of your way when you're not using them. If you look around here to the to the back end, we've got the uh, the walkthrough door, and as I swing that door open, you'll see that there's very minimum step up to get in the boat. The idea there is to you know when someone's coming in out of the water, they're slippery. They when they step, they, they don't want to have to a big step over or step on cushions. You know we the cushion raises out of the way, and you've got a non-skid surface on the lid that's underneath that cushion. So if you'd like, you can snap that cushion all the way off and get it out of your way while you're skiing. And then as you step in, you've got the clean fiberglass surface there with the non-skid. Underneath that, we've got a lined, um, and everything's lined in our boat. When you open the lid, down inside, you have a storage compartment where you can store small items without fear of them falling down in the bilge. Uh, all these compartments are um, water resistant so that you can store things like uh, life jackets or what have you. Now, underneath where you're sitting there, we open that lid. Um, we'll have access to the live well. As this is the case in almost every Key West boat, there is a live well. These uh, live wells today are tinted with the blue gel coat, light blue. And the idea is that when you put a live bait in the, the live wells, that color keeps the bait a little bit more calm and extends their useful life. Uh, the, um, the self bailing I mentioned earlier, these drains that you see in the back end of the boat are to drain the water that gets in the cockpit. When you have that um, that swimmer enter, they're going to drip water in the boat. Rainwater can run out. You can leave the boat unattended at a dock, and whatever water from rain gets in the boat, you don't have to worry about a bilge pump getting that out. That is a self bailer. Ah, the ice chest. I'm not going to talk about the ice chest now. Cup holders. Talk about cup holders. Now we have equipped this boat with generous supply of cup holders. The, the driver, the passenger, the passengers up in the bow, they have their own cup holders. Cup holders all over the boat. Every location that a passenger could possibly want. Uh, as I say, we don't want to encourage drinking and boating, but just in case you have your cup holder. And of course, we've got an ample supply of rod holders, being the Key West, of course, for the fishermen. Right. Yeah, here for the fishermen, there are rod holders on every Key West boat. The, uh, the captain's chair. Uh, this is um, a very comfortable captain's chair, and it does convert into, when you flip up the, the base, it converts into a, a higher angle so you can sit in a tight space and see where you're going. You maneuver around, um, and when you want to be comfortable, flip that back down, sit down so you uh, and it can reach the steering wheel. All of the instruments, the switches are, are right there in easy reach. And if you look at the uh, the dash panel there, we have ample room on this dash panel to mount things like the Disc Carmen 740S, which is a 7-inch screen, very generous size screen. Dual console boats historically just didn't have enough room for that. And beside the uh, the Garmin, you'll see the Yamaha multifunction gauges. Stereo also comes standard on a dual console right. boat, doesn't right. it? Right, on all yeah. the dual console boats, the stereo is a standard feature. 
and this one as well. Uh, this is one of the upgrade stereo systems that has the Bluetooth capability as well. The um, little pocket I'm pointing to here on the sidewall of the boat, uh, that was one of those areas that it, it could have been wasted space, but why not mold in a storage area on both sides so that you've got somewhere to put the inevitable uh, cell phone or what have you. The area we're looking at here, the, uh, the porta potty room, as you can see, we've got safety gear stowed in here. The safety gear can lift right out, and now we have access to the, the potty room. Uh, you've also got a freshwater sink. Freshwater is standard on this boat. So you see the, the spigot here, that's fresh water. And you can uh, be, hook a hose onto that if you'd like and take a shower outside of that, um, that little potty room. Simon, if you'll step up here and, and uh, take a seat, stretch out, and I think you're right at six foot. Yeah, so we can see that you know even a six footer has plenty of room to stretch out. The grab handle is conveniently located so that you can hold on and feel secure. The cup holder again within easy reach. And behind. Mm -hmm. so if you're sitting or sitting wherever you're sitting in the boat, you've got a cup holder right there within easy reach. And we've got a um, got the storage under the seats as well here. Just unbutton the cushion in one spot, and up it goes. Right, and you'll see there again, we've got the lip around the storage area, and the, the lid overlaps that so we can resist the water getting in on what you've got stored. These uh, compartments are also insulated. Because the boats are somewhat foam-filled to make them unsinkable, you'll have some yeah, insulation in there. If you're so inclined, you can throw some ice and drinks in the boxes. Or some fish if you catch any. Yeah, <laughs> I'm usually not that lucky. <laughs> and we've got a filler cushion. We've got, area, right? we've got two options here. You can take a 72 quart igloo cooler with a cushion attached on top and slide it in this space. It's made to fit. Or we've got a, uh, a platform that can fit in there. It's a starboard surface. You can take the cushions out, have just a platform in there so you have a casting surface on the fishing day. Or you can take that starboard um, uh, filler board and make a table out of it or throw a cushion on top of it and have a full sun lounge up in the front. Mm -hmm. Put something in a bikini up there. Right. Lots of options on the, the front deck area. Anchor locker is a standard feature on all of our boats and the, uh, the anchor comes with it and is made to fit the, the individual anchor lockers. You get all your rope and all that mess of the anchoring out of the way, not in some other storage compartment taking up value of space. That's something I haven't actually seen on the Key West price list, under the options. I haven't actually seen one that says something in a bikini. There's no box to check for that one. It's, um, we'll have to it, talk to Hutch about that. It's on the back page. It. On the back page. Yeah. On the back. <laughs> you know, in, in most runabouts, there's um, an ice chest on board. And inevitably, when you want to get a drink, you've got to get somebody to get up. In this one, we've taken this space back here that's normally wasted and incorporated an ice chest in, built into the boat. It's accessible from the back of the boat if you're outside the boat swimming or from inside the boat easily accessible by just by reaching over the back. The, uh, the 150 Yamaha, yeah, that's a, um, a very good balance on this boat. It's not the maximum horsepower. But I feel the 150 is probably, uh, if not the best choice for most people, um, a better choice for most people. The uh, the 200 horsepower is maximum, and with uh, Yamaha's new four-cylinder ultra-lightweight engine, uh, I wouldn't be afraid at all to put that, that engine on the boat. It's still very well balanced with the 200, and you do pick up a few miles per hour in speed. Yeah. The, the variable valve timing that they've incorporated on these engines today gives us much better bottom end than typically a, an older four-stroke would have, and it doesn't sacrifice anything on the top end, uh, and gives us better fuel economy in the mid-range. I think you're still close to a 50 mile an hour boat with the 150 on the back of the 203 anyway. You, you wouldn't be shy, would you? Absolutely are very, very mm. close to a 50 mile an hour boat, and realistically in this style boat, 50 miles an hour is enough. Right, what we're doing here is just uh, taking the boat for a quick spin and test run, which is what we do with all uh, 
Key West boats, bought from Key West boats, direct. Um, everything gets taken for a fresh water test just to iron out if there are any bugs, see if there are any bugs, give everything a little uh, check through, check all your switch gear, make sure the uh, live wells, bilge pump, all these things are running, check the engine, check the telltales going. Um, try and find if there's anything, you know, minor that may need correction when we go back to the factory. And 99% of the time nothing's wrong and uh, the boat goes back, gets washed down and then shrunk wrapped and put on the trailer, ready to go. Um, you can see here this boat is a lovely handling boat, the 203 DFS. Um, even the guys at the factory have, have commented on uh, what a great little package this is with the 150 uh, Yamaha on the back. It just seems to have really nice balance handles the waves and, and uh, chop very well. Uh, all in all, a, a great fishing boat and also a great family boat. We're just slowing down now, bringing the boat back towards the jetty. Uh, this was actually a uh, holiday on the uh, day that we took this boat out. And so there were a few boats at the ramp just slowing down, bringing it in close to the pilot for uh, getting the queue to put the boat back up on the uh, trailer. Okay, we're out of the boat and off the water. We're on the trailer and we're going to have a little bit of a chat about the exterior and the hull and show you a little bit more about that so let's go to Tom over here. Okay, the, uh, the hull on this one is a what I would call a fairly conventional design. It is a, a 19 degree dead rise uh, and when we're talking about dead rise I like to relate to other boats of similar size. The, the average would be probably 17 degree dead rise, some as little as 15 degree. The difference there is with the 19 degree we have a much smoother ride than the 15 degree and a somewhat smoother ride than even the 17. Uh, that's the purpose of the dead rise, that angle of entry gives you the smoother ride, so that's what we've got here. Um, now, before you move on though, we were talking about this the other day, you did say the 203 actually was a, a variable... Variable dead rise. Variable, variable dead rise. Yeah. Dead rise if, you, if you move to the front of the boat, which we will, yeah. I'll show you a much steeper dead rise there, which gradually trend, or trends... Uh, continuous variable Right, variable continues rise. into what we call the 19 degree dead rise, which is a little flatter back here. Mm -hmm. The idea there is we're hitting the water up in the front. Yep. That's where you want to cut the water with the sharper dead rise. Yep. And then if, as you settle down in the water, you want some stability. Mm -hmm. So if you were real sharp all the way back when you settle in the water, it's real, so tipsy you can't stand it. Mm -hmm. So we flatten out somewhat towards the back end. Mm -hmm. so Chris, that's where your variable you know, dead rise comes in. Off the, off the point a little bit, but I know one of the guys who bought a 211 Mustang 28, which you probably wouldn't know, it's an Australian boat Mustang 28 foot. Now his dead rise, you know, I think he said it was either 24 or 25 degrees, it was way up there. Mm -hmm. And so consequently he said, yeah, when he was out there at rest, it was wee -hee! Yeah, yeah, side to side to side to side. And he got the 211, he couldn't believe how stable it was. Right. And yet um, it rode better because you've got that duo plane on. I'm trying to picture the Mustang 28, and it kind of comes to mind. It, it's similar to the, the Dakota. Uh, the Dakota's built in the States. It has that real steep 25 degree dead rise, yeah. and yes, a real, real flippy floppy. Um, Especially when you've got a 28 foot boat, but it's only an 8, eight foot right. something or rather right. beam. That was, really the, that was the Dakota, it was an 8 foot beam. A real long, a long, narrow, steep dead rise. Mm -hmm. um, Great when you're going fast. But not much else. <laughs> you know, like, like Hutch has mentioned to me before about these boats, we build the SUV of boats. Mm. Uh, it's not the sports car, maybe not, but it's, uh, you know, this right here is a nice SUV. Mm. Mm. Yep, I'll go along with that. Okay, before I interrupt you, where are we going? Uh, well, I was going to show the, uh, the, the ladder. You okay. Know, we, yep. we again on this one have the, the flush mount where it stores. Uh, this folds out. You pull the, the dungeon off. You telescope into three steps. The three-step ladder allows, you know, when you're in the water, yeah. uh, some people need all the help they can get to get out of there, so the, you know, the reach is not so high in order to get your first foot in there. You climb around right out. On your way up, you'll see you've got the handle. You can be in place to help you put yourself in. And then, you know, 
backside, that, uh, that easy entry I mentioned. Yep. You can see that easily. We've got just mm -hmm. enough step up right here to keep the water that you drip here when you crawl out of the water, yep. keep it flowing out of the boat instead of in the boat. And then you step into the boat across a very, a very uh, short step up so it's, uh, it's, you don't have a stumble point there. That's... Most boats of this type that I've seen in the competition, they don't put a door at all. Mm -hmm. It creates a long step up and over and you've got to step on a cushion on the other side to get in the boat. It's very little kid friendly, right? around the boat and shown the bits that we go up the front of the ridge. Shall we? Tom, is there anything to do, uh, specifically point out on the bow? Apart from the rod and nice well, lines, we, of course. We talked about the, the sharper entry, and you can see from this angle yeah. that we have a much sharper entry up here where the boat actually meets the water. And the, the purpose of that, obviously, to cut into that water, like I was saying before. Yeah. And from this angle, you can easily see it. Yeah. That's very true. If you get down, and, and get from a lower angle, you can see how when that bow cuts the water, and the water is coming up the, the hull, it mm -hmm. curls back down very effectively in this downturn chine. Yeah, very hard chine, and downturn chine. Right, yeah. and then we have no angles on that, it's all a nice gradual curve. Yep. Water comes up, throws back down, creates lift in the boat, throws the water down, keeps the water out of the air. If the water doesn't get up in the air, it doesn't blow back on the passengers. Yep. We just came back in out of the water, and we're dry. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it was a fairly windy day today. Very windy day. Very windy day.